This is a podcast by The Straits Times. The third round of questioning that he went to, it lasted 19 hours. So these are like grueling circumstances, right? These are very harsh circumstances. 19 hours is not great. Why are you keeping someone there for 19 hours? It's like torture, you know. Hello and welcome to Pop Vouchers, a pop culture podcast by The Straits Times. My name is Jen Lee, and this is our first episode of 2024. Woohoo! Okay, I'm clapping now, but later I will not be clapping because the topic is actually quite upsetting. But anyway, um, this is our first episode of 2024. I just want to wish all listeners, you know, a very happy new year. I hope you all had a good time, uh, you know, over the holiday period and crossing into the new year. I hope you're all well rested and ready to take on 2024, which still sounds a little bit insane to me because I can't believe, you know, 2023 went past us just like that. I'm still processing 2021 and somehow we are in 2024. But anyway, uh, before, you know, before the end of the year in 2023, I was actually quite looking forward to what I would be doing in January. I was thinking about, you know, what topics can I do? What would be a good thing to start a new year with? I wanted to start on a really like positive note, but Things happen and unfortunately, it's a very sad thing and it's also something that I feel that we should talk about, which is why we are going to talk about the case of South Korean actor Lee Song Kyun, who apparently took his own life, you know, at the end of the year, amid investigations into his alleged illegal use of drugs. Having said that, you know, you should take note that because this is the topic for today, there will be discussions of suicide, there will be discussions of Uh, you know, self-harm and so on. And if that's not something you can handle at the moment, please feel free to step away. All right, so let me just give you a little bit of rundown of what I want to talk about. Um, You know, firstly, I'm just going to just give you the, you know, the download on like what happened with Lee Song Kyun. You know, his suicide, obviously, very sadly, very tragic. And then um, I'll give you a little bit of context on who he is, you know, his position within the South Korean entertainment industry. And then We'll go into a little bit of detail about what happened, but I'll just say up front here that I can't read Korean, so all the stuff I'm reading is, you know, either secondhand sources translated or things from wire services like the Korea Herod and Korea Jonggang Daily and so on. So I'm not claiming to be like an expert in, you know, what happened in this case, but I'll do my best to let you know a little bit about what the news has been like coming out of South Korea before his death and in the light of his death. Okay, and then after that, I think we'll also mention a little bit about South Korea's war on drugs, right? Which uh, has impacted some of the celebrities, including Lee Sung Kyun, as well as, you know, G-Dragon and actor Yoo Ah In, and get into a little bit of my thoughts about all of these things that happen and what I feel about them. So, all right, let's just get into it. So, South Korean actor Lee Sung Kyun died on December 27th at the age of 48, amid a maybe two months long investigation into his alleged illegal use of drugs. Now, South Korea, like uh, Singapore, has a very tough stance on drugs. So it's not like, well, weed is legal and think no, like no substances are legal. You know, marijuana is illegal, cocaine is illegal, ketamine, everything's illegal. Okay, so, and the use of drugs is very, very heavily stigmatized. And it is a career-ending scandal, you know, to be involved in drugs. It can be a very, very uh, severe allegation that impacts somebody's career in a very, very negative way. Now, uh, Lee Sung Kyun is actually married. He is married to an actress called John Hae Jin, whom I have seen in a few series before. And I really, you know, I feel for her. And the couple have two sons together. And clearly, you know, the stress of being in this months-long investigation and being talked about being uh, in the news cycle as much as he was and the stuff that was coming out about him, I, I, I think it clearly got to him because he left a suicide note in his home. He headed out, I believe, in the early hours or very late nighttime hours. He left his home. His wife woke up, saw the note, called the police, tried to find people to find him. Uh, When they found him, he was in his car and he had supposedly burned coal. uh, um, So it's carbon monoxide poisoning from what we understand uh, is the cause of his death. It's pretty much, you know, it it looks like a suicide. I don't think that there's going to be, obviously, like, you know, things are under investigation and they haven't come to like a 
specific conclusion, but it's very obvious he most likely took his own life under the stress of what happened. Um, I think people who are not familiar with South Korean entertainment, not familiar with Lee Sung Kyun might not understand, but to just give you a little bit of context about who he is and why this news in particular made it so big, Lee Sung Kyun is a very, very well-respected and very beloved actor in the South Korean entertainment industry. Uh, I think most local audiences, if you watch K-dramas, your first impression of him is probably from Coffee Prince. So that's a drama from way back 2007, one of the early Hallyu dramas, and he was the second male lead in that show, which honestly made Gong Yu a star, right? The first male lead of that show was Gong Yu. And, you know, Coffee Prince was a very big hit, and then, you know, Gong Yu went on to become an A-lister. But also, Lee Sung Kyun went on to become a very well-respected actor. He acted in very art house films, you know, uh, became very well known for his acting ability. Uh, he was in another pretty famous drama called My Mister or My Ajushi. I think sometime in maybe 2018, uh, he was cast opposite very, very popular singer-songwriter IU in that role. And it's actually a very well, like, very well-received, very highly acclaimed drama for being very realistic, being very gritty, and being very optimistic despite a lot of things happening to the characters being quite uh, depressing and this drama, particularly in light of his death, seems very poignant because it deals with, you know, his character in that show is someone who is dealing with a lot of stress. Someone who seems to have, like, a perfect family, but is dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety and at one point contemplates taking his own life. Uh, so it's very poignant in light of his death. But one of the reasons why Lee Sung Kyun's death has been so covered by the international media is because Lee Sung Kyun was part of the cast of the history-making, record-breaking Parasite, the South Korean movie Parasite, which is the first non-English language film ever to win Best Picture at the Oscars. Uh, this was in 2019. It was a big, big news, big celebration, you know, all throughout the film circus because people love Bong Joon-ho, the director of that movie. And, you know, Parasite is genuinely a very well-made, very, very entertaining uh, movie. And Lee Sung Kyung was part of the cast. He plays like a wealthy patriarch who later gets entangled into this poor family schemes and everything. You can go check the movie out uh, on View. You can also catch it at the projector. There are limited screenings in January, so you can catch it there as well. Um, so that's the reason why uh, his death was so heavily covered by international media because his international profile rose considerably because of Parasite, right? The entire cast of Parasite, in fact, uh, is fairly well known because of this film. And it was obviously a, a moment of pride and joy for Korea at the time when Parasite was, you know, winning all these awards. And these actors were all extremely beloved, right, for having birthed something that brought so much joy and, and attention and pride for Korea. And, you know, at the time of his death, uh, Lee Sung Kim was still extremely prolific. In fact, two months before his drug scandal broke out, Lee Sung Kim was promoting another film called Sleep, which was, you know, he was promoting quite actively, you know, it, it was doing well and everything. So, he, you know, he's booked and busy, you know, he has, a, he has a very wholesome image, is basically what I'm saying. Very wholesome, very well-respected kind of guy. So, when news broke out in October that he was being investigated for drug use, this came as an incredible blow to his career. You know, people went online and talked about how disappointed they are with him and were like, oh my god, I'm shocked. I thought Lee Sung Kim was one of the good ones, you know, like, how could he do this and also and so on and so forth. And, you know, I would say like the, the news really, it took roles away from him immediately after the news came out. You know, he had to drop out certain titles that he was supposed to be part of and it immediately had this immense effect on his career so immediately he was under a lot of stress now to go into a little bit about exactly what uh, he was accused of it was worse because this drug use allegation is tied into an extramarital affair allegation okay so basically what happened is that when this news broke out that he was being investigated for drug use it was said that he had consumed these drugs at the residence of a hostess as well as at the bar where the hostess works. And this bar is said to be one of those bars that are, I guess, thought to be a little bit unsavory, like, you know, bars where 
your pay hostesses to hang out with them and so on. So there was that that level of shame, you know, built in with the level of shame of like being investigated for drug use. So the stigmatization of drugs and also the fact that he, a wholesome family man, was being caught in a scandal in which he was being accused of visiting bar hostesses at their home and maybe establishing, you know, extramarital affairs with them and so on. So there's like two layers and, you know, his morality obviously was being questioned and he was being judged for being like a bad man and so on and so forth. Okay, now the case of Lee Sung Kyun, you know, in the wake of his death, people have been looking at how the police have handled this case and criticizing the police and criticizing the media um, for giving like Lee Sung Kyun undue stress la, because, you know, as much as what I was mentioning just now, oh, he was being investigated for drugs, is this unsavory scandal. The details of the case, right, are a little bit iffy. And, you know, again, I don't speak Korean, so what I'm gathering is from English sources. Uh, but basically... What I can gather, and, you know, in reports, you know, Dispatch came out with a report and everything, and I'm not saying that everything you read online is true, but my general vibe of uh, what happened with the case is that, I believe October 18, you know, the police wrote up this initial report, right, of this hostess that they were investigating. And this hostess was a lady, I believe in her 20s or something, um, was a lady who was working at this bar, and she was being investigated for, I think, drug use. And then she said, this hostess said in her statement after she was arrested that, oh, you know, she did drugs with this, 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 this people. And among these people, you know, who was accused of, one of the people accused of taking drugs is Lee Song Kyun, the actor. And then October 19, so October 18, uh, the police made this, wrote up this initial report. So very, very early in the investigation, October 19, immediately the news was leaked. Then actor L was being investigated for drug use. And people was started chatting ready. There was really chatter like, who is this person and everything. And the timing is weird, right? Because like as people, you know, are, are looking into this, they're saying like, why did the news come out so fast? How did it get to the press this fast? And, you know, honestly, it's not that easy. The police doesn't just call you up and be like, hey, by the way, we have news. You know, it, that's not common protocol. So people are like, well, how did it get to the press? This first, did the police leak it, you know, in an attempt to maybe drum up a little bit of publicity for the work on, they're doing, for the war on drugs that they're doing by hauling this famous person out and say, look, we're investigating him. And now, again, at that point in time, at October 18, from what I understand, there was no concrete proof beyond, like, this woman saying that Lee Sung Kyun had done drugs. And then by October 19, the news was out, actor L being investigated. And then very, very soon after, people dug up, oh, it's Lee Sung Kyun, right? Like, the news came out, there's, there's Lee Sung Kyun. Immediately affected his career. So there is that. And also there's some, like, blackmail going on. Um, I believe prior to this investigation taking place, I'm a bit confused because some reports say there are two of these hosters women and then some reports say it's just one, so I'm a bit confused. But basically what happened is someone tried to blackmail Lee Sung Kyun by saying like, hey, and that, there's, I believe there's audio recording of this somewhere. Like, hey, you know, when, after you got drunk, you don't know what you did with me, you know, so like, do you want to, like, I, I'm being investigated. There's some stuff there about like wanting to extort money, someone wanting to extort money out of Lee Sung Kyun in exchange for keeping their silence about whatever he was doing with these hostesses at these bars, right? And I believe some reports say Lee Sung Kyun actually paid them off. But still, you know, obviously it didn't work. You know, his name still got put out there and everything. And again, I am not very sure because I don't read Korean. A lot of the big like uh, newspapers like the Korea Herald, Korean Jonggang, right? They don't fully go into like a specific, very granular detail about what these phone calls and leaked audio clips are about. But I don't fully get the feeling that he paid them off just because they were accusing him of using drugs. I get the idea that maybe he was paying them off because, well, he was kind of going into these unsavory places while being a married man. So maybe that's why he paid them off. I'm not sure. I'm not very certain why he paid them off. But uh, suffice to say that apparently he did you know, try to silence the blackmailers. And then, you know, obviously this news blew up. Uh, Lee Sung Hyun went through three rounds of police investigations. And the thing with, like, 
Korea is that a lot of these famous people, right, when they get brought in for investigations, they have to do this weird thing. And, like, this is not a thing that I see people do in, like, other countries. I certainly don't see it in Singapore. Like, when they get accused of things, they have to, like, go to the police station and then there's a bunch of journalists waiting for them outside. And then they have to stand there and, like, give a statement. And from what I understand, this is completely not necessary from a legal perspective. Like, you don't have to do this, right? But, like, because, you know, when celebrities get accused of stuff, accused of drugs, accused of crimes or whatever, there's always, like, a horde of media waiting outside the police station, like, catching them as they go in and leave the police station for investigations. And, like, they, you know, oftentimes the celebrity is expected to stand there and like, say a short statement or bow and say they're sorry or something, right? And Lee Sung-kin had to do this, like, three times, lah, because he was caught into questioning three times. And the various things that are coming out, right, of the questionings and of, you know, the investigation, from what I'm gathering, it seems, like, pretty obvious that he was seeing some of these hostesses. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was a full-blown extramarital relationship. But it does seem like he, at the very least, did frequent either their residence or their place of work, which is the bar. And it seems like he had maybe personal relationships with one or two of these hostesses. And that's not great, you know, given that he's a married man with children. That's not a good thing to do. Obviously, I don't feel like this is something that deserves a death sentence in any case. But this is part of the reason why he was criticized so heavily online. And then one of the things uh, is that so the hostess who accused Lee Sung-kin of taking drugs asserts that he definitely took drugs with her in her place of residence and everything. She asserts this. Lee Sung-kin maintains that if he took any substances, he was tricked into taking them. And he admits that at one point he did inhale a substance via a straw, but he thought it was just sleeping pills. And of course, people lashed out at him for this, laughed at him, mocked him online and said, how could you be so naive? If you're inhaling something, how could it possibly be sleeping pills? What are you talking about? Lol. Ha ha. He must be like faking. He must be lying. He's such a bad liar. Stuff like this was all over the internet. But very important to note, Lee Song Kyun passed all the drug tests. So the drug tests that they would, you know, like you, you test your hair, follicles and everything like that, that came back negative for drug use. So the police actually didn't have anything concrete beyond a he said, she said story to charge Lee Sung-kyun with. So at that point in time of all the police questionings, he was not yet, like, arrested or, or charged, if I'm not wrong. Like, he was not yet indicted. But, you know, the press was already all over it, like, and, you know, his life had already almost sort of been ruined because he was getting put out of projects and his family was undergoing a lot of stress. And, you know, if they are, you know, the thing with celebrities is, is like, there's usually a morality clause if you're being an ambassador and have endorsement deals or anything and if the morality clause often involves like you know if you run in trouble with the law right you might have to pay a large amount of penalty or fines to the brand that hired you and so on and so forth so maybe he was going through some money troubles because of this case and clearly it took such a toll on him and honestly right some of the investigation also like the third round of questioning that he went to it lasted 19 hours so these are like grueling circumstances, right? These are very harsh circumstances. 19 hours is not great. Why are you keeping someone there for 19 hours? It's like torture, you know? So the South Korean police have come under fire, right, after Lee's death for like, kind of like exerting such undue pressure on him and coming after him so harshly when they have no real like concrete evidence that he took drugs. And there's also been some talk that maybe all this celebrity drug use scandals is being used by the government to cover up some of their own scandals because uh, I believe, you know, currently the ruling party is People Power Party. And then um, I believe someone from the opposing Democratic Party of Korea actually said, like, you know, why are all this news coming out just as the daughter of the secretary to the president is being accused of school violence who caused nine weeks of injuries to the victim. The president himself is dealing with a bit of a blow after, you know, his party lost a, a by-election and so on. And then all that news, right, is being buried by the Lee Sung kyun drug scandal, which, again, you know, they tested his hair follicles. The test came back negative, so we're not sure if he actually took drugs. And now this is not the only thing that the police have come under fire for. It's not the only thing, you know, I mean, I obviously, 
this has shown a light on the very harsh culture in South Korea, the sort of internet culture in South Korea in which, you know, people kind of jump on the train and cyber bully someone very harshly. You know, this has been the cause of several, I mean, not the cause, we never really know the cause of someone's suicide, but this has been credited uh, or speculated as the cause of some of these celebrities' stress and um, what led to suicides of celebrities in the past as well. You know, South Korea has one of the highest suicide rates uh, in the world. And it's not the first time a celebrity has committed suicide after, you know, facing a considerable amount of stress from the public and scrutiny from the public and so on and so forth. So, you know, this case has obviously shown a light on the South Korean system, you know, on the South Korean internet culture, but also the South Korean police because people are asking questions like, why did the case of Lee Sung Kyung get leaked so fast to the press? Was it the police trying to leak it to the press? Like, was the police doing this against protocol, right? Protocol is like, you're not supposed to just like randomly go to the press and tell them what you're working on. So like people are asking like, you know, is there stuff here that's shady? And obviously the police came out and denied every single allegation and said that everything they did was, you know, in accordance with protocol. But again, that's their side of the story. Um, But to me, it certainly feels, it, the timing feels very suspicious. I think the fact that, you know, Lee Sung Kim's news, the news of his investigation leaked so quickly is not great. And honestly, I feel like if it was like, again, I'm I'm not a law enforcement person, but I feel that, you know, after so many cases of, you know, celebrities being in the public spotlight and everything, after burning sun and everything, you know, I think the police is well aware that when a celebrity is being accused of something or investigated for something, that really impacts their career. So I feel like if you are, you know, a dutiful police who wants to protect people before, you know, innocent before proven guilty kind of stuff, if you want to protect people before you uh, come to conclusions, before you can come to conclusions, you will not leak this story to the press and you will not, you would do this like in a in a more low-key kind of way, right? Instead of being very openly like, yes, we are summoning Lee Seung-kyun for questioning. Whereas like, I mean, it was one woman saying that Lee Seung-kyun took drugs without proof. And like, you're just making it a big show of like Lee Seung-kyun coming in for questioning. That's not great, right? I mean, do you have any concrete evidence? I mean, if you don't have any concrete evidence, that kind of feels very premature and it kind of really feels like you're ruining someone's life. So I definitely understand why People are jumping in to criticize the Korean police, um, you know, and this is not the only person, right, that is being dragged into this case. This hostess also apparently accused Big Bang's leader, G Dragon, of drug use. And, you know, different from Lee Sung Kyun, G Dragon came out immediately and was like, I did not take drugs. I did not do drugs. I am going to go in and I'm going to, like, do, you know, cooperate with the investigation and everything, but I didn't take drugs. And he came out very, very strongly straight away. And I was on TikTok and I saw a bunch of his videos at the police press line, the place that I was talking about, right? Like outside the police station. He came in voluntarily. I believe he wasn't someone. He came in voluntarily. And like he stood at the press line and people were making videos because he looked so like confident and even a little bit cocky. And he was like, you know, Looking like a big star. He is a big star. He's an A-list star. He's one of the biggest K-pop stars prior to BTS. And he was like, just standing there like, yeah, look, I'm going to cooperate. I'm going in. I think I'll be fine. And he was, you know, looking really confident. And fans were saying like, wow, he looks like really sure of himself. And, you know, indeed, his drug test came back negative. The police had to close their investigation into him because they lacked concrete evidence. So like, that seemed to be kind of where the Lee Sung Kyung case was heading as well because, again, his Lee Sung Kyung's drug test came back negative. And then, you know, G-Dragon came out and talked about how he was going to set up a foundation for drug addiction and everything after this whole scandal because he was like, yeah, you know, guys, I didn't take drugs and I feel like, you know, I want to spend my money, you know, helping addicts and so on, you know, aiding in recovery and, you know, drug use prevention and so on. So that was the other part of this whole Lee Song Kyun saga, right? That is, that's a bit overshadowed now. But, you know, G Dragon was also very much involved in this case and he came out of it clean. And that really leads us to wonder, like, you know, honestly, Lee Song Kyun might have come out of it clean. He might not even have been indicted at all because, again, they lack, like, hard evidence that he took drugs. Okay, and 
again, right, this all comes under an effort by the South Korean government to crack down on drugs. So not just Lee Sung Kyun and G Dragon. Prior to this, in March, I believe, earlier part of 2023, the very, very beloved, very well-respected actor Yu Ah In was also investigated for drugs. Now, Yu Ah In is a bit of a different case because he kind of did admit that he took drugs. And one of the drugs that he was accused of taking was propofol, which is this sedative, I believe, is a very strong type of like sedative that you take before like surgeries. It puts you to sleep. You know, it just like kind of like knocks you out. So apparently he was using it and he maintains that he used, you know, ketamine, propofol and stuff like that for medical purposes. And he denies the use of cocaine and everything. But basically, UIN has been indicted and in fact, somewhat admitted to his drug use. And again, his career was also ruined. Uh, he was recast. He was supposed to be in Hellbound Season 2. It was a Netflix K-drama. He was supposed to be in that. He was in Season 1. Um, he was taken out of it. Uh, stuff that he's in, you know, kind of has been held back. It can't really air, can't really broadcast or premiere yet because of his scandal. So it really does affect their career to an unimaginable extent, right? Because in Hollywood, you can be like Ezra Miller accused of like abducting a child and somehow The Flash can still premiere. But anyway, you know, in South Korea, that's not the case. Like scandals like this really, really affect your career and affect your projects. They affect like, the release date of your projects, you can't even show it, right? And I think that might have, a, in fact, might have a chilling effect on overseas countries wanting to work with South Korean actors and filmmakers because what if you get in a scandal and then my project is buried forever? That's a, like, legitimate concern. But yeah, so all of this stuff about Lee Sung Kyun, about G-Dragon, about UIN, all of it comes under the current president of South Korea's war on drugs, right? He's taking a very hard stance on drugs. and. The thing with war on drugs is that we've seen before, like in the Philippines, it sometimes it can lead to very bloody, very sad, tragic outcomes. And this is me speaking as myself, and I understand that Singapore has a similarly very tough stance on drugs. And I'm not saying at all that I think people should be free to take drugs. I'm not saying at all that I think marijuana should be legalized or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I think this idea of like war on drugs, let's crack down on these people who use drugs, let's punish them and things like that. I think that attitude can lead to, you know, this very unhealthy demonization of drug users and drug addicts. And the thing is, we have to recognize that a lot of the times addiction is a disease. I'm not saying that people can't make their own choices or can't help themselves or anything like that, but I'm saying that you know, I think it, it's good for us to extend a little bit of empathy to other people and a little bit of humanity to other people. People like Lee Sung Kyun, even if they did take drugs and even if they did cheat on their wives, which is bad, right? Come on, that's bad. But they don't deserve the sort of like condemnation, the sort of like, you suck and we don't want to see you in anything anymore. Like they don't deserve that sort of ruination of their lives, I, I personally think. I mean... It's not like he's a drug kingpin. It's not like he's smuggling four tons of cocaine across like state lines or country lines and hurting the lives of millions of people. They're not that. If even so, again, I'm not saying he did. If he was truly taking drugs, he's just a recreational drug user. And that's not good. That's not great. And obviously, if he did do something against the law, he should be held accountable. But I don't think it's a crime that is worth us demonizing someone over and basing all ideas of someone on and being like, this is a bad person, this is a person who doesn't deserve redemption or anything. Like, that's really, really harsh, right? And I think this whole stance of like, war on drugs, let's crack down on drugs, let's capture all these people and punish all of them, it really takes you away from the humanity of other people different from you. And I just feel really sad because like, <sighs> he was such a good actor. And again, I'm not saying just because you're a good actor, you can do bad things or anything. But it's a life lost and he's a father, you know, he's a husband. He was beloved by people in his life and he clearly felt so trapped by the narrative that was forming around him. The idea that he's a bad father, he's irresponsible, he's a bad role model, he's a bad husband, he's unsavory, he's gross, he's, you know, um, taking drugs, he's a drug addict and he's, you know, all this really mean things that were being said about him and his family, right? And the stress that his family was put under. Obviously, I think his sons are teenage years. I think if your father was going through something of that skill so publicly, you would be 
hearing about it in school or something. And I think that really forced him into a place where he felt so trapped and so hopeless that the only out he saw was death. And that's just really sad. I think, you know, as a society in general, I think, you know, in Korea, it's a very advanced, you know, very first world kind of country. I think we need to learn to be kinder to people, you know. And I think that's something that I've seen so many times in the South Korean entertainment industry. This is not the first suicide we've seen, you know. We've seen people like Sun Lee take their own lives, Jong Hyun take their own lives, Gu Hara take their own lives. And it's just really sad because these people, you know, I'm not saying that people always kill themselves because of what people are saying about them on the internet. But I think that's clearly a contributing factor. The sort of scrutiny and stress is clearly a contributing factor and it doesn't seem to be changing in South Korea. And in this particular case, it also feels very sad because like the police was also clearly trying to make an example of Lee Sung Kyun. And, you know, Lee Sung Kyun's lawyer actually asked, like, you know, for his third questioning, can he do it privately? Can he not go in so publicly and everything? Like, can you just spare him that humiliation? And the police said no. And it's like, it. come on, you know, like, he's. you don't even have any hard evidence on the guy. Like, and you're, like, making a big show out of him walking to the police station and, and naming and shaming him. It just feels really overblown. And ultimately, I think it led to something really tragic. And again, I'm just saying, I think this whole demonization of people who take drugs, this idea that addiction is, is a choice you make and, it, you know, you always have control of it. I, I don't think that's true, you know, and... I know, like, a lot of people, not even drugs, like, alcohol and stuff like that, sometimes people just fall into bad choices because of circumstances in their lives. And I think it's important that we reach out to help these people instead of saying, these people are criminals, they all deserve to be thrown into jail. And then once they are thrown into jail, we'll just forget about them. And then they'll come out and they'll, we'll just forget about them forever because they suck, because they went to jail once, because they did drugs once or what. Like, people make mistakes. Like, I think it's good to extend a little bit of humanity to other people. And clearly, you know, I think in this case... Lee Sung Kim really would have benefited from a little bit of kindness, lah, and uh, it just feels really, really sad. And I'm really glad that G Dragon and U I N have not found themselves in a place where they feel the need to make this extreme choice. Uh, and even though you know U I N was very heavily criticized, I think at one point someone threw a bottle at U I N, like when he was like standing outside the police station, like it. It's really a lot, you know, like this idea of like, imagine you standing, even if you're a criminal, like, who, this person threw a bottle at him, like in the public. That's so, that's like, lot, like it's a like Game of Thrones shame level of stuff. And I'm just like, this is this good? You know, this isn't a conducive way to deal with problems in our society. This isn't a conducive way to deal with people who have made mistakes in the world, you know? And certainly it's not a conducive way to deal with famous people. Like, famous people are already, not to, you know, give too much sympathy to them, they're already under a lot of scrutiny. And when bad things happen, it gets amplified. It's just really sad. Because if, like, my friend was saying, like, if Lee Sung Kim wasn't famous, he was just a normal person, he was being, like, dragged into this whole drug case, he probably would have been fine. Because I think what really did him in was the fact that the public was scrutinizing it like this, was the fact that he had to face the press like that and the fact that all his projects were getting pulled even before there was any concrete proof of him ever taking drugs. So, yeah, that's really sad and that's the note that I'm going to end on. And, you know, I hope this serves as, like, sort of reminder for us, ourselves as well, to just really, like, you know, take each day seriously and to be kinder to the people around us because you never know what can happen. You never know what someone is going through. You never know what can push them over the edge. So take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And this is your dose of pop culture for this week, I guess. It's very depressing, but yeah. And just a little bit of housekeeping note, there will be no, can I tell you something crazy this month? Because again, I'm going on holiday. So yeah, we will come back and reconvene in February. Thank you very much. And if you have any ideas on what I should talk about, any feedback about what I said, please write in to us at podcast at sbh.com.sg or write in to me at genly at sbh.com.sg. Alternatively, you can also slide into my DMs on Instagram at genlywrites. All right, that's your dose of pop culture for this week and hope you have a good year ahead despite the depressing news cycle that this year has started with. All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye.